YouTube Oz it going the goat house is back and today we got I think our most popular video it seems like every year on the channel so I'm excited to do it we're regrading the first round each pick of the first round of the previous draft 2020 NFL draft if you remember uh, every single year the right after the draft we talk about the best picks everything we actually go live during the draft but the day after we make these grades right after they they make each of those first round picks we have these grades so we'll take a look at uh, the grades that I gave them last time and what the grades are now. Very important, I'm not grading the players. These aren't player grades. I'm not grading the players based off their rookie performance. I'm grading the value of the pick. So I hope that makes sense to people. People are always kind of confused because when I graded originally, right after the draft happens, obviously I can't give them player grades, so I grade the value of the pick based on my board um, you know, and, and uh, where they picked them, what went on. So the same thing happens. Now we get an idea on the talent level of the players, so that plays a part. Uh, we're grading the value of each pick. A lot of you know, the, how the players will play is uh, to be determined. So hopefully everyone understands it. We're going to go pick by pick here. Uh, please subscribe. Full NFL coverage, off-season videos like these, draft, free agency coverage, uh, playoff coverage going on right now, full NFL predictions, everything. We got you. So subscribe, smash that like button. Be much appreciated. Follow that Twitter. That's a must-follow. Um, check it out. A lot going on there. Takeaways live during games, breaking news, breaking it all down. Uh, any link that you need will be in the description and comments, so check it out. Uh, let's go on to the grades. So Joe Burrow was the first overall pick of the draft. Originally, uh, I gave it an A. He was my number one player in the draft. Originally, I gave it an A. You know, I'm not in the business of dishing out A-pluses for picks that teams should make. So it was the right pick. You had the first pick. Take the best player. So I still gave it an A. You know, he was looking very impressive until he got hurt. Um, you know, we're not going to judge him off getting hurt or anything like that. Bright future. It was still the right pick. You got a franchise quarterback here. Hopefully he stays healthy. It remains an A. So it shouldn't really be too much of a surprise on that one. Uh, and the same thing applies to the second pick. Chase Young to the Washington football team. Um, and don't mind the logo. These are the graphics from the actual draft. So since then, the logo of Washington football team has changed. But, yeah, I gave it an A. It was the right pick, you know, at, at the time, you know, the second best player in the draft. You could bring up the discussion that would they be in a better, um, you know, situation if they had a guy like Justin Herbert now. So you can actually discuss that now. Would they be a better situation if they got that quarterback, which they need, and now they're not sitting in the driver's seat to get a quarterback? So I guess you can knock the pick a little bit, but second best player in the draft and the second overall pick, it, it just made too much sense. And you, you got a franchise pass rusher. He, he might be the best pass rusher in football one day. Um, so it's going to remain an A there for Washington. Third pick, Jeff Fakuda, you know, to the Lions. I didn't like the pick originally. Um, if you remember, I got ripped for saying that. I said it all offseason before it even happened. You know, I, I said you can't take a corner third overall. You traded Darius Slay away to just reopen a spot to take a cornerback third overall. You know, cornerbacks are so hit or miss. And th we'll talk about Akuda's future in a second. I'm not talking about his future when I say all this. But cornerbacks are so hit or miss, and it takes forever to develop them usually. Jalen Ramsey's kind of a rare guy. You look at Stephon Gilmore, he was solid at first. Nothing really that special ends up, you know, it takes how many years, four or five years, and going to Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots to become an elite corner. So that's a prime example as well. Uh, so I, I wasn't on board with taking a corner third overall. He also wasn't my third best player in the draft. Uh, also, at the time, I said that Patricia and Bob Quinn were on thin ice, so taking a corner wasn't going to help them at all. So the pick really didn't make any sense. So I gave him a C plus. I did like Akuda as a prospect. I thought he was the best corner in the draft. Um, yeah, he didn't play all that well this year and missed a lot of games, so that affected it as well. So it did get bumped down just be, because it ended up being right, what I was saying, you know, that, you know, it, it, it just wasn't really worth it to take a corner, you know, third overall. It turns out that these, some of the other corners were, you know, just as good. A guy like Henderson has more upside even, um, you know, so it's just, it's just not worth it to take a corner third overall. I did like Derek Brown and Isaiah Simmons better for them. I liked them more for them, uh, and that could have been the better option. Again, Akuda will be fine. I think he'll be a good corner. It's going to take a little bit of time. That's just how corners work. So an investment in a thir elite pick third overall, uh, questionable decision there. So I gave it a D. And again, that's it's I, I can't stress enough. I'm not grading the players, which I mean, maybe that could be the grade for the player this year, but it's just the value of the pick. The player's future um, is not the grade. The grade's not the player's future. So hopefully everyone understands that. 
Fourth overall pick, Andrew Thomas. I gave it a B minus. I did think it was a little early. It might have been a little surprising the day of we kind of thought this might happen. I would have preferred a trade back. Um, started off really bad, actually, Andrew Thomas. He started to pick it up. You know, I think he could be the future right tackle. Um, you know, if, if they want to find a good left tackle, I, you know, I kind of, I said that pre-draft too. I thought he could be better at right tackle. Uh, I bumped it down. I brought it down a little bit because they were in a driver's seat to get a quarterback as well, which they believe in Daniel Jones too much. And they also didn't take, you know, the best tackle in the draft saying that pre-draft and saying that now. So I gave it a C. I think he'll be fine. He'll be solid. I, I you know, I do think it's a fit. Um, you know, but they kind of missed out on a couple of different opportunities, different scenarios they could have went with there. So I gave it a C. You know, the more I'm talking, the more it sounds like they, yeah, they definitely should have went another another option. But we gave it a C here. Uh, fifth pick, Tua Tonga Vailoa. I gave it an A because it viewed, you know, felt like that was the guy the whole way. They might, maybe they wanted to trade up to make sure they got him. They didn't have to trade up. They still got the guy. Um, he got some play under his belt. He played okay, you know, pretty conservative, you know, more of a game manager. The last game he turned the ball over a bit. Um, you know, so not, not the best rookie year, but I'm not too worried. You know, he didn't play terrible or anything. I'm not really too worried. You know, he's coming off that bad injury. I guess that's the thing to worry about. Can he recover for that injury? Maybe he's in his head with that. Some question marks, but uh, I think he's their guy of the future. You know, I, I really think he is. Um, yeah, I guess it's to be determined how he how he plays, but uh, you know I still like the pick. Yeah, I guess the question you know people are going to bring up should they have taken Herbert? Um, you know could they have went uh, you know a different direction? You know now they have the third pick. They probably couldn't have predicted that with the Texans getting the third pick, them getting it. You know could they have taken a better quarterback? It's tough to say. You know I st overall I still like the value of the pick. I still like the pick. He's got a future. And we'll see if it works out for them. Uh, so that's the Dolphins, the fifth pick, the sixth pick. I really shit the bet on this one, didn't I? Uh, and why, why I, why I'm really mad about this one? You know, if I'm, if you're wrong, everyone's wrong. If you're wrong, you're wrong. Uh, but not only that, but at one point I was kind of right because I don't know a lot of you, if you're with us a long time ago, after Justin Herbert's freshman year at Oregon, watching his tape. I actually made the statement that Justin Herbert was going to be the next elite NFL quarterback, and I completely went south on that, completely went south, uh, because for some reason he declined over the next few years and was a pretty conservative quarterback, but it felt like his confidence was drained, and it felt like he was in his own head. I saw a lot of hesitation, and I stand by that. That's what I saw on tape. That's what I saw live in games you know, in Oregon, a lot of hesitation in his game. So I kind of went against that, and it's something that I – and I kind of went against it, something that I always say, too. Something I always say is quarterbacks don't really change, but I usually say it the other way. You know, it's to me trying to convince that quarterbacks, you know, stop being attached to these quarterbacks, you know, after they're in the NFL a couple years. Uh, they don't really change. Your traits don't change. They can improve a little bit, but they're not going to change. So that's always worked out for me and always stand, stood by that. But I didn't apply it. I made the mistake by not applying it the other way around. Justin Herbert showed us his freshman year that he has all the traits in the world. He has the tools to be a legit quarterback. And for some reason, something went wrong in there. I guess the people were to blame were the coaching staff of Oregon. Uh, something went wrong there where it just didn't look right, and you, we all kind of got feared um, – you know, on, I guess, declining for some reason. Uh, but went to the Chargers, you know, obviously they got that out of him. You know, they settled him down. They got that out of him. He had a ridiculous rookie season. Uh, the traits are the, – they're elite traits. He has elite traits. That never change. And I guess that was our, some of our mistakes. Uh, the traits don't change. He has the elite traits, and he showed it on the field now this time rather than the last year at Oregon, which he was solid last year at Oregon the last couple of years. Um, it just didn't feel like the freshman Justin Herbert – um, you know, so he gets an A plus. That was a great pick. And now some teams are we're, we're sitting here thinking: Should the Dolphins have taken him? Should we go? Should the Giants? The Giants probably should have taken him. And then you even you even question a team that got a, a, an elite prospect in Chase Young, who's got an elite future. Should they have taken him? Would they be in a better situation? Very interesting to think about. Uh, so yeah, Justin Herbert's uh, A plus, or I should say that this is, we're grading the team's pick. So. Uh, and then Justin Herbert, if I would have graded the player in his rookie year, he'd probably get an, I mean, he'd get an A plus as well. Uh, next, Derek Brown got an A from me. I like Derek Brown a lot, and he still gets an A. He's a disruptor from the inside. He'll stop the run at a high level, get in the backfield, and get pressure. He's not gonna he's not gonna rack up. He'll get more sacks as the years come, but. Uh, he's not going to rack up a bunch of sacks. He doesn't need to do that. So this was a pre I thought he was a option for the third overall pick for the Lions. Uh, that would have been a better pick. Panthers get him at seven. The value of the pick looks pretty good. They got themselves a good player. Remains an A. Isaiah Simmons, I gave an A plus because he's my third overall player in the draft. Just a freak athlete, a do it all guy, a playmaker, uh, and so I gave it an A plus for that. I'm gonna. 
I almost kept it an A plus because that doesn't really change. I love Isaiah Simmons. I love the upside. He's a he's a football player. He's gonna he's gonna make some big time plays for this team. I gave it an A though because yeah, you question the fit and why he wasn't able to get on the field in the beginning because of the fit. You know, I think he'd be more. You know, I think he'd be more that A plus player in a four three defense. He's playing in a three four, but they got him going finally. And as soon as that overtime Seattle game happened, you know, he made a play in that game. And ever since then, he started. They played him more, and he started turning around a little bit. Still has a bit of ways to go. Understand the three-four, playing more of an inside role. Uh, but I still love the player, love the prospect, love the future. The value of the pick was still there. He was the third overall player on my board, third overall player on a lot of people's boards. So I still got to give it an A. It's just a question of the fit. Will will he be a fit for the long-term future? But they got a talented prospect here. There's no doubt about that. Uh, the ninth pick, C.J. Henderson. I gave it a C. I'm gonna bump it up to a B. This one's growing on me a little bit. You know, he didn't. You know, he played pretty well early, but then he kind of slowed down a little bit. I gave it a C because I'm not a big fan of taking the corners in the top ten unless they're a Jalen Ramsey type. Uh, maybe Patrick Sertan, who we'll see this year. Maybe that's the type that we can take in the top ten. Uh, and he's a very raw prospect. You know, he wasn't gonna be good right away, even though he was good really early on. But that, you know, um, you know. Sometimes that happens, you know, he kind of went to normal where we thought he were, was going to be after that. Uh, but a lot of a lot of potential. C.J. Anderson has a lot of potential with his traits. He has, he has the, the ultimate traits corner, you know, so he actually might have more of an upside to Jeff Akuda, who was supposed to be the best player the day one, even though he wasn't for the cornerback, the cornerback position. Maybe injuries affected that. But I bumped it up because the Jaguars are all about future. They have a load of these draft picks for a reason, so they got a, uh, a future cornerback here, that a guy that will be really good in the future. So it grew on me a little more. I bumped it up to a B. I'm always not a fan of taking the corners in the top 10, though, because they're so hit or miss, and there's not that much of a difference between these ones. The later first-rounders, the mid-round pick. So, um, yeah, I bumped up to a B, though. Grew on me a little more there about that pick. Uh, number 10 was Jedrick Wills, who was my number one tackle of, of the class. Um, you know, I think Tristan Wirfs ended up playing like the best tackle this year, but Jedrick Wills was my number one tackle, and he'll remain that, you know, looking future-wise. I gave it an A, and I'm bumping up to an A+, plus because you're not supposed to be able to get a franchise piece tackle now that he's proven, and then now that he proved that he was kind of the last piece of the puzzle, plug him in here, and we could have maybe the best offense line in football. Um, you're not really supposed to get that at pick 10 you're, you're, you're really not you know one, one of the more you look at quarterback you look at maybe edge rusher guys that get elite pressure uh, and guys that stop that pressure and protect quarterback tackles you're not supposed to get this good of a guy here last piece of the puzzle to bring make you an elite offense line and get you to a big reason why you're in the playoffs for the first time in whatever 18 years whatever it is um, you know so that that's an a-plus pick there that worked out uh, wonderful for the Browns and Jedrick Wills uh, same thing here gave Mackay Becton a b-plus at first um, and I'm going to give it an A-plus because you're just not supposed to be able to find a franchise piece tackle here at pick 11, especially when two are off the board already. Um, you know, you're just not supposed to be able to do that. And uh, I loved his run blocking ability, you know, was very high on that. You know, and the, the question was pass protection. Uh, I liked it for the future. I wasn't really doubting him for the future. Just will, will he struggle early on? I thought he was pretty damn good. So it looks like uh, it's pretty clear cut that they found a franchise tackle that you're really not supposed to be fi to be able to find outside the top 10 at pick 11. So I'm giving an A-plus for the Jets there. Moving on, Henry Ruggs. Yeah, I wasn't a huge fan of the pick um, right off the bat just because he wasn't my number one receiver. I didn't really consider him, you know, being the first receiver off the board. I gave it a B plus though because they did they did need some speed downfield and that's what they got. So I kind of like the fit. Turns out that Nelson Aguilar was the speed that they needed downfield better than Ruggs for some reason. Um, you know, so that was a bit of a surprise. But yeah, kind of going back, you know, a guy that just really didn't get, uh, you know, can, couldn't get involved is not enough of the, that you want and kind of factoring in and you kind of give him pass because yeah, it's just a rookie. He'll grow and he will grow. He should be a factor for them. But the young receivers, the rookie receivers, the, this era, they're taking over instantly. They're plug-and-play guys. Why? Because they can be involved in so many ways, and they have the footwork to get open. You know, and, and Ruggs is kind of one-dimensional, it, it, he kind of shown. So that's pretty tough there. So they probably chose the wrong receiver a little early for a one-dimensional guy. He does have a future. He's a big play waiting to happen, so I'm excited about that. But uh, for now, that it's a D-plus based on the value of the pick at pick 12. Uh, next, Tristan Wirfs, A-minus originally. Gave it an A plus. 
Um, you know, they traded up, you know, slightly to do this. So maybe that's why the A minus, you know, I value the pick that way as well. Uh, but they end up getting the best rookie tackle on the year, the last piece of the puzzle. Um, so as we expected, a pretty damn good pick ends up being an A plus pick for the Buccaneers. So yeah, best, best rookie tackle on the year, bright future, uh, made that Buccaneers go offensive line, go from mediocre to great. So it's a pretty good look there for Tristan Wirfs and the Bucks. Next pick was Javon Kinlaw, gave him an A minus. I really wanted him to take C.D. Lamb at the time, but we can't knock them for that. Um, and we're going to give him an A now. Javon Kinlaw is kind of the DeForest Buckner replacement. And, you know, it's kind of rare to find a DeForest Buckner level replacement at pick 14. And I think they did it. You know, he didn't play at DeForest Buckner level yet, but I think he's got the bright future. I think he can do it. Um, he stopped running at a high level. He got some pressure that he needed to get. So, I, and, the, and that's when the defense was beat up around him as well. So they got one here. We knew he's a freaky upside guy. Uh, so I give it an A there for the potential uh, rare replacement of a rare player at pick 14. Uh, 15 was Jerry Judy. I gave it an A plus because you know they they got him after Rugs. You know I didn't you know and I I love the fit. If you remember, I thought Jerry Judy was the number one fit of the Broncos, and I still think it can be. I still think it is really. Um, you know, but it just turns out, yeah, he struggled a little bit, but it uh, turns out there could have been some better receivers, but I, I still like the pick. I give it, an, I give it a B plus. Big play waiting to happen. Uh, fantastic route runner. I, you know, got to catch the ball. Got to catch the ball. And I guess we knew he struggled catching the ball, and I guess that's kind of maybe where I'd give myself a knock there. You know, if number one, number one for a receiver, catch the ball. If he struggles to catch the ball, you got to knock him down a little bit. And I didn't knock him down a little bit for because of the other things really just wowed enough, which I still think he's going to be really good. He's got he's got to catch the ball. He's got to understand, he's got to read zone coverage as well. He's dominant beating man coverage. He's got to understand zone coverage. Receivers, you know, with this talent level tend to do that. They, they definitely understand, develop, you know, get buff that knowledge. So, um, Hopefully, and I think he will be able to, Jerry Judy will be able to do those things and catch the ball better. Still give it a B plus because I like the fit. I like his future there, uh, but it's not at that A+. Plus. Uh, 16, A.J. Terrell. Wasn't a big A.J. Terrell you know, guy for the for the Falcons. I really wanted them to take uh, Clavon Chase on with this pick. You know, The value of the pick, 16. It's rare to be able to get a pass rusher with tremendous upside at 16th overall. So I really wanted them to take that, and it sounds crazy. It sounds crazy because Chase on didn't do much this year. I still, I still would want them to do that because, uh, you know, they, I think they need an edge rusher of the future. And Chase on is a big time upside guy. Like, you know, he wasn't supposed to do much right away, anyways. He didn't play every game. He is going to be a guy that, you know, five years, four years from now, five years and up, whatever, is going to be a terror. And I still think, I still think that could be that. You know, so I thought the value of the pick kind of fit that. But AJ Terrell had a really good rookie season, a lot of upside. Maybe we knocked him a little too much for getting, you know, torched by Jamar Chase. Jamar Chase is another animal, so it's kind of just one game, maybe. Uh, but yeah, AJ Terrell looked really good, so I'm gonna bump that way up to an A minus. There, he's got a bright future. Cornerbacks, you know, hot and cold. You know, sometimes it's kind of they're kind of weird to judge those at the same time. So we'll see uh, if that that continues. Uh, CD Lamb, I gave an A plus. I'm sticking with an A plus. CD Lamb was my number one receiver. In the class, and um, we can't decide who the number one receiver is out off of one year. And C. Lamb played the part too, playing outside, dominating the slot, always open, big play after the catch ability, use him as a punt returner as well. He's gonna be a very good receiver for a long time. He looking like he was gonna win rookie of the year when Dak was in. It's a very small sample size, but yeah, he'll get his Dak back. Yeah, you know he'll get he'll get all those guys back. And uh, this was by far the best player on the board at pick 17. You make it again uh, and again and again. Again and again, you know, it was the it was the best receiver. It was the best player on the board. You take it. People are saying they should have taken defense because they need defense. You know, there's no point to reaching for a guy just because you need it. You're gonna pass on C. Lamb for a def defensive guy that is just not as good of a prospect. It makes no sense. You know, uh, maybe you know. I don't think I would do it even if this, but you know, maybe you only do that if you're that position away from winning the Super Bowl. So. I don't know. I, I love the Lamb pick. I think he's going to be a great receiver for a long time. Great value pick. Remains an A+. Plus. Austin Jackson, I gave an F because I did not have a first-round grade on him. Um, I actually had an early three on him. You know, when he went against good competition, he got dominated, um, you know, at the college level. So I didn't really like that. And I thought they could have done... 
Um, you know, I thought they could have filled other needs with this pick. You know, you had your opportunity to, to get that receiver. And why did they fall short this year? It's because the offense was pretty conservative. Uh, Tua didn't play that great, but the receivers played pretty damn poorly. They didn't have guys that could get separation, um, you know, and really catch the ball at some point, too. So I, they, I still think they kind of messed up on that. Austin Jackson ended up being better than I expected, but does that mean he was really good? Not really, you know, he started to struggle when he played better competition down the stretch of the year. So I thought they could have went with a better pick here. Uh, he did end up being better than I expected, which was either not on the field or pretty damn awful. But, uh, yeah, so he ended up being a little better. But still some questions there. Um, the offensive line surprisingly played better than expected early in the year as a whole, but it started to fall down at the end of the year, I thought. So we'll see what happens there. They had an opportunity to take one of these great receivers and kind of solve their problems uh, beforehand here. Uh, 19th pick, Damon Arnett, gave it a C plus. Thought it was pretty early, um, and I bumped down to a D. And that, you know, you know, he he struggled a bit. You know, he struggled to get on the field. When he's on the field, he did struggle. He didn't look like a knowledgeable cornerback for some reason. Uh, didn't play too well. Was a big reason for the Raiders' struggles on defense. You know, those corners sometimes. Um, and but then the Raiders kind of speaking about him, Gruden kind of speaking about him, just doesn't sound good. You know, doesn't sound like they're that confident for some reason. Well, I guess we know reasons, but uh, yeah. So for those reasons, I bumped it down. It was just a, it was a big reach, so it wasn't too valuable of a pick there. Nineteen should be a valuable pick. Uh, so we bumped it down to a D. 20, Clavon Chase. I gave an A plus because a freaky edge rusher like that was not is you know. Typically, you do not see at pick 20. You look at every single year and why there's not good edge rushers taking later in the first even. It's because it's such an important position. They go earlier. Chase on the ultimate upside guy, freaky guy, um, you know, you know, going at pick 20, you know, to fill that. Uh, I guess that need opposite of Josh Allen, uh, I thought was fantastic. Um, he didn't do much his rookie year. He got one sack. He played how many games he played, you know, half the season, um, you know. So we could judge him based off his rookie performance, but again, what was the scouting report on him going in that he doesn't he's not really going to do anything that much, you know, a whole much of anything right away. He's that future guy and to get a guy like this a 20th pick, I still like the value of the pick. So I gave it an A. We couldn't really give him the A+ cuz we'd seen a disappointing performance, I suppose, but didn't get the full full load, I suppose. So I still like the pick for the future here. So I gave it an A. You know, you just don't see this value at pick 20. Uh, 21 going to be Jalen Rager. I liked Rager. You know, I, I liked, I still like Rager, you know, a big play guy you can use him in the, getting the ball in the backfield. He's getting the ball. He's really good running routes downfield, making that big play can return for the Eagles. You know, he's still, he's still a good player. I think he'll be a good player. Eagles got an interesting situation going on there though. Um, you know, I almost thought the team I was gonna, that was going to get Rager was probably going to be late twenties and I was probably going to give him an A Eagles end up taking him 21 while Justin Jefferson was on the board, so that kind of dropped the whole letter grade for me to B, and it just turned out to be even more of a bummer that they passed on a guy like Justin Jefferson, and they, you know, and then Rager, they couldn't really get Rager going, so I dropped it down to a C. I still think he's got a bright future. He's a good player, uh, and that, speaking of Justin Jefferson, that brings to that. I gave him, gave the Vikings an A+, plus because the very latest, the very latest he was supposed to go was the Eagles, and I also, um, you know, said the Vikings' number one receiver fit was Justin Jefferson. I said that he was probably number one on their board as receiver going into the draft just because he's their type of receiver that can play slot outside. You know, he's another Adam Thielen type receiver. Uh, and that ended up working out very well for them you know, at the draft and in the season as well. So it's an obvious staying in an A-plus there uh, for the Vikings uh, and Justin Jefferson at pick 22. Pick 23 is Kenneth Murray. This is probably the toughest one to grade. This is probably the ultimate incomplete one, and that sounds funny because he played. Um, they traded up to get him. I like Kenneth Murray. You know, he was that ultimate, you know, I thought he was like a Swiss army knife type of guy. You know, I actually liked him coming off the edge out of Oklahoma when he did, even though he was more of an inside linebacker, kind of a utility guy. He needed to work on his coverage skills. That was his only knock really. Uh, and the Chargers traded up to get him. You know, and knowing Gus Bradley, he's got a unique defense, defense, the way he moves, guys like Ingram and Wosu around. I'm like, okay, this is the right guy to get his hands on Kenneth Murray. You know, they I you know, I didn't really like that they traded way up to get him at the same time, but I gave him a B plus. You know, maybe a raw prospect. This could work out in a Gus Bradley defense. I gave it a B plus. Um, you know, and they didn't really use him the way that I thought they would use him. You know, and, and he struggled in coverage uh, quite a bit, like we kind of thought he would, but he was just kind of just stuck in a role where you're not getting his whole talent out of him. Um, you know, 
So he didn't perform all that great, but he, I still like him as a lot of upside. And now Gus Bradley's gone. So there was this like a pick for Gus Bradley and it didn't really work out the way he wanted to use him. And now Gus Bradley's gone. It sounds like a major disaster, almost like I should be giving it way worse than a B minus. And they, they traded up for it too on top of it. It almost sounds like it should be like a D, D grade, but... For some reason, surprisingly, they weren't using him the way I wanted the, 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 them to use him and the way he should be used to utilize all of his, his whole skill set. So maybe now, actually, surprisingly, with a coordinator change, a coaching staff change, maybe they'll head that way. You know, maybe, and I still like him. There's, he's got so much talent. Coverage skills are pretty bad, honestly. Uh, but there's some hope here. So I, I really didn't know where to grade this one. So you're, uh, hopefully people aren't skimming through the video and listening to what I say. Uh, because it's really going off what I just said there. Um, so there's some, there's a lot of hope there because I love his skill set. But in a way, it was pretty bad. You know the situation here, the the value of the pick, I suppose. But they got uh, they they got they got a talented player at the same time. It's a tough one to grade. Cesar Ruiz, uh, I kept that a B plus, a tricky one because you know it felt like they drafted a backup. Maybe um, you know he's a starter. You know talent wise, starter. Um, and he's starting right now, but it felt like, you know, maybe for the Saints, they drafted a backup, but they're really good at making sure the offensive line, there's never, they never, never miss a beat, you know, and that's a lot of the good consistent teams are like that, you know, Packers, I think the Chiefs would be like that, you know, Brady, uh, Patriots in the Brady days, uh, kind of like that, uh, those teams seem to be like that, you know, and it works out, it's really good, so I kind of liked it, you know, I kind of liked it, gave it a B plus, it's not a sexy pick, I suppose, and now that he doesn't really start this year, and now, you know, now he has to start, and then, you know, had to fill in when guys got hurt, so that was great. It's still really not the sexiest pick, but they're about to be in a weird cap space situation. They're about to need this guy to start, and so it's kind of a good thing they got this guy, and they're not trying to scramble for this guy this offseason. So I kept it at a B plus. You know, it's kind of another tough one, I suppose, to grade, but just kept it where I had it. Um, 25, I gave the 49ers a B minus. You know, they had to trade up a little bit for this pick. They kind of gave up a lot, so I wasn't in love with that, even though I did have a first round grade on Brandon Ayuk, and I like Brandon Ayuk. Um, you know, now it looks like he's probably their best receiver, um, so that bumped it up quite a bit. You know, I think it seemed like a really good fit for them. He seemed, he, the way he plays in the field seems like a really good fit, so it seems like a guy that they had to have. So I bumped it up a whole grade there to an A minus, so really looking for his future. Um, I think a do-it-all receiver. You get the ball in any way there, so I like that. Uh, Jordan Love, probably another one that's probably the toughest to grade. It's kind of an incomplete grade for him, but again, we are not really grading the rookies, the players themselves in this. We're grading the value of the pick. So first glance, when I was going to make the great regrade on this one, I'm thinking, well, the Packers are legit Super Bowl contenders right now. If they took a guy to help them, you know, if they took a defense alignment or inside linebacker, you know, maybe uh, they could be even better and have a chance to win that Super Bowl if they may, you know, did that make that pick. So that sounds like this is a bad pick. But, but when do you get a, a quarterback, when you have a quarterback with this skill set, with this upside, tremendous upside available at pick 26? You don't. You don't see that. The Packers are picking late every single time, pretty much. Um, this is a rare, maybe once in several, several years, maybe more than that, uh, opportunity here. So I'm I'm still good with it. I'm still good with the pick. I kept it at a B minus. Sure, they could be a little more of a contender if they if they went out and grabbed. Uh, I mean, what if they grabbed a guy like Chase Claypool? Top of my head here, just thinking about that. You know, that would probably look better right now. But think about the value of the pick. When do you have the opportunity to get? Uh, the quarterback with this skill set. We see that Herbert's not supposed to be anywhere this this good. He was kind of just an arm, you know, has the traits. Does he have the knowledge? Does he have the confidence? Does he have the, uh, I guess, the vision, you know, the ability to scan the field, read defenses? Uh, same questions. And Herbert's doing all that. Jordan Love, similar area there. Um, you know, maybe he could be that good. He's going to be sitting on the bench for a little bit because Rodgers is winning MVPs these days. But, um it's still rare. So I love the value. Of the, I still like the value of the pick. Shouldn't say I love it. Uh, Next, Jordan Brooks is another tough one. Uh, Jordan Brooks, I, I raved about Jordan Brooks uh, in the pre-draft process. Remember, I loved his tape, loved Jordan Brooks, thought, and I loved him as an early second-round pick. Uh, the Seahawks take him late first. It's 27. It's not a big deal. Early second, late first, really not a big deal. I was a bit surprised of it. My problem is, why did I love Jordan Brooks? Where did I love Jordan Brooks? I loved him in the exact position that Bobby Wagner, the, maybe the best inside linebacker in football, is playing. So they basically got two of these guys, and it doesn't really work. 
You know, Jordan Brooks going to be a good player. He's a talented player. It just seems like he's playing out of position. Um, and they kind they play a lot of two linebackers, so he's kind of got more responsibility than they had at Texas Tech, which in a different way. Texas Tech, had you had to carry that defense, so he had some responsibility there, but in a different way. I just think he's out of position. I was surprised about the pick. Gave it a C plus, and I, I'm still kind of, you know, is he going to be the Jordan Brooks that I thought he was going to be? You know, when Bobby Wagner's playing in his position, and obviously you can't take Bobby Wagner out for Jordan Brooks. So, it's an interesting pick. Seahawks always make those interesting picks, don't they? Uh, Patrick Queen, I gave it a B plus. Now I'm giving an A minus. Uh, Patrick Queen, a raw prospect. You know, kind of... Kind of started to worry a little bit, even though he's a very good prospect, obviously, as like the pre- the draft process went on. Because for somebody like Patrick Queen, all my you know takes on him were based on the late year and his, the terror he was going on. You know, just the, I mean, absolute domination. And I'm like, let's go back again, watch early in the season. And he really struggled early in that season. So uh, that's kind of a question. You know, is he going to have those moments where he struggles a little bit? Um, and he kind of did this year. You know, I think he played better earlier in the beginning of the year. But I think he's such a good fit, and he has so much upside. Remember, that was his first year starting, and he actually came in as a running back to LSU. So he has a ton of upside. So I bumped it up a little bit. Um, he did miss a, a ton of tackles for my liking, too many for my liking there. But good player, really fits Martindale's scheme. Hopefully Martindale sticks around as a good head coaching job for the Ravens' sake. Um, you know, uh, but yeah, Queen's obviously a really good player there and one for the future can clean some things up though. 29, Isaiah Wilson. I, I did, is F minus a real grade? I don't know. I dished it out right here to the Tennessee Titans. They get an F minus. I gave it a C. I had an early third round grade, uh, on Isaiah Wilson. And, uh, so I thought that was early, but that sounds like a D or an F pick as it is. If you have a third round grade on him, I love the fit though, you know, and I still gave it a C, which is not a good grade. It's way too early. Value the pick. Don't reach on fits. I've, I said it year after year, and t- people are like, they need this, they need that. No, you take the best available player, um, and this is kind of a re- another reason why, but I guess more things went into that. Uh, but, yeah, why maybe I didn't give it that terrible grade. I love the fit to replace Jack Conklin here. You know, if there was a guy that kind of can be that Jack Conklin, that replacement, it's going to be Isaiah Wilson. So I love the fit. They had to have him, but they didn't do their homework on him. Off the field issues like crazy, and you think he would learn, but he's still out. You know, it sounds like he's still out causing a ruckus out there. Uh, Just can't get on the field, and it's not like he was going to be that talented of a guy right away anyways. But they could have used him this year with Terry Luan going down. I know he's a left tackle, but they could have moved some things around. And they could have used a pass rusher here if they want to draft that. They could have used a corner. Uh, They just failed to do their homework, it felt like, do their research on a guy like this, and and they reached on top of it. So that's just a terrible pick. Uh, And who knows? He'll get on the field. Could be a good player. Not saying he won't be, but it looks really bad right now. It looks really, really bad. So that was the worst pick of the 2020 draft there. Uh, and I didn't like this one either. I kind of like Noah Igbunogane from Auburn. I kind of liked him. Um, you know, very athletic, former receiver turned corner. I always love that for the upside. Um, you know, understanding the other position you got to guard. Uh, pretty physical for his size. Yeah, can run. Uh, did commit too many penalties. That's the knock on him. Um, you know, kind of, kind of lost track of the ball when it was near sometimes. Uh, but I kind of liked him, but I didn't really like him for the Dolphins here because you're you're basically drafting a slot corner in the first round when your cor- corner's a strength of your team. So I'm not a big need guy, but on top of it not being a need, you know, I think it's just early to take a slot corner. Then he end up just not playing a whole bunch, and it just it's end up, you know. Austin Jackson could be a good piece, but with the last two picks, it looked like they could have helped themselves, you know, especially this one, a lot more for this year, potentially made the playoffs. You know, they, they just, the team could look that much different. So, you know, they have all these picks, and you have to execute these picks. You have to. So he could be a good slot corner for a long time. Who knows? I just don't know if you take a slot corner. On top of that, too, I didn't think he was the best slot corner in the draft and available. I thought Jeff, Glad- Jeff Gladney was, but then the question of do you take a slot corner, um, and some people thought Jeff Gladney was just an outside corner. Could be, could he be both? We'll talk about him in a second. It's actually a pretty, pretty big coincidence here um, that, they're, that they're back-to-back picks because they were, you know, I t- said at the time, do you take a slot corner in the first round? Um, and if you do, you know, Gladney's the better one. So that, it gets a D-, minus. not really a good pick there. Uh, it's just a coincidence that, that these guys are kind of linked and how it ended up being. Uh, Jeff Gladney I thought was the best slot corner draft, but I liked him better outside. You don't take a slot corner in, in the first round, I don't think. And I liked his upside because upside he played more of that at TCU, but he didn't end up looking that good outside. The Vikings ended up moving him in the slot, and it looks like, they took a slot corner, and he could be their slot corner for a long, long time, and he could be could be very solid. He, he missed a lot more tackles than I thought he would. I thought that was kind of his strength. 
You know, he can hit. He can. He wants to tackle. He can make the tackle. For some reason he was bad at that. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I viewed it as a fit. They traded back, got picks with that. Keep with this. Keep that in mind. So that's kind of a positive. Um, you know, so they. I, you know, I think they got a Zimmer guy that can be their slot corner, which is pretty important to them. You look at Mackenzie Alexander did for a long time there, somewhat of a long time. So it's pretty important, but yeah, just the value of the pick, taking a slot corner, it kind of, I don't know if he failed because they can put him back at, outside, try him again, um, you know, but yeah, kind of, you know, we, we they draft him to play outside, dominate there, ends up being a slot, still has some things to work on. So it's going to go down quite a bit, A to a C-plus there for Gladney. And because of that, they kind of still need an outside corner. Cameron Dantzler, who they took in the third round, seems like better than their first-round pick, Jeff Gladney, more valuable as well. So that's pretty interesting. Um, and the last pick was Clyde edwards Lair. I gave it an A because I, lo I love the fit, uh, and it's still a great fit. It's going to be a great player in that system. We'll see if he comes back here in the division round. If not, if they win, they should, he should be available in the AFC Championship game if they make it. Uh, but, yeah, it's a tremendous fit. It's going to be really good for them. Uh, they could work on their interior line to get him going even more in the uh, run game interior-wise. But, yeah, it's, it's just a perfect fit. It's just a perfect fit. No matter, you know, you could argue this guy's the better rookie running back. This guy, you know, Cam Akers maybe has the traits. Jonathan Taylor had the production whatever you could argue it this is the best guy for the Chiefs for sure and he can be the best rookie running back regardless of the team he's on anyways um you know so it's just again it's just a tremendous fit I still love the fit it still gets an A kind of thought he would go in this range late first early second so it's not a A plus wow jump off the, you know jump up and down but uh I, mean, I guess the fit's kind of a wow but yeah so that uh that's all 32 picks that's regrading them I uh, really enjoy making this video, video. Hopefully, you guys enjoy it every year. People, I think it's people that skim through. So, me saying this probably doesn't know, probably doesn't help at all. But people just think I'm grading the players off their rookie performance. It's not at all what it is, and there's a reason for that. It's because I we're looking at the original grade. We're not going to change the system how they're graded. You know, may, it wouldn't make no sense. You know, it's all about the value of the pick, uh, and it will always be like that when it comes to us covering the NFL draft. So, and we got you covered fully for the NFL draft. More content here on the go for the draft than anywhere else in the world. Um, and then we have full off-season free agency, playoff coverage, everything. We got you. Follow our Twitter for even more of that talk uh, and talk during live games and polls. You guys will vote for – you guys will basically make a mock draft in mock draft season through the Twitter. So check that out. Be much appreciated. Um, yeah, if you can do that, smash the like button, subscribe, turn notifications on. But that is going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.